Good morning and welcome to the Boeing University studio from the International Boeing campus in Arlington, Texas. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kelly Bednar and I'll be your host for this episode of the Boeing University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. We have another great show to share with you today. Welcome to our new viewers and welcome back to those joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. So grab your cup of coffee or your favorite morning beverage and let's get started improving your profitability. Today we have with us a guest who is new to the profit break but no stranger to the Boeing University, Mr. Eric Guthrie. Eric has presented with us in numerous bowl expos and management schools for more than a decade. He's been in the laser tag industry since 1994, starting out as a part-time game marshal. Not only is he president, vice president of Zone Laser Tag, the largest laser tag manufacturer in the world, but he also owns a standalone laser tag facility. He founded the International Laser Tag Association, plus he also created the National Laser Tag Day celebrated on March 28th of every year. And he's also the coordinator of the Laser Tag Convention. Not to mention, he has authored numer book, numerous books and articles regarding the laser tag industry. I think you can see why if we have had Eric present with us at all these years uh, at, at Bull Expo and management schools. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Kelly, for having me here. This is crazy. How, how when you started as a marshal, uh, where was that? So I really got my big break in a bowling facility, an 80-lane house in Indianapolis called Expo Bowl. And they added laser tag, and I joined the staff on that. I was hired by Don Mitchell. And, um, and what's really more amazing isn't the fact that I'm still in laser tag after all these years, but they still offer laser tag after all these years. And that goes to the staying power of laser tag and bowling. So what is that connection to bowling and laser tag? Well, you know, we're a great dynamic in the fact that um, um, we're able to generate revenue at laser tag is able to generate revenue for the um, bowling facility, especially when the bowling facilities have uh, a wait. When they've got a wait list and there's people uh, hanging around, instead of letting them leave, they can go play laser tag and drop another five, seven, ten dollars uh, into laser tag. In addition, it adds to the bowling facility's ability to offer laser tag birthday parties or laser tag group events, um, and it just creates a dynamic that uh, really appeals to the the bowling industry. Oh, I didn't think about the birthday parties and groups uh, as you go through. Well, speaking of birthday parties and groups and party hosts and, and the amount of staff that would take that, now that staff, how would you staff a, uh, a laser tag? Well, you know, we should operate on a dynamic schedule for staffing. During the week, things are a little slow, so you can get by with one or two staff members. Uh, but on the weekend, when things are really busy, or if you really want to become busy, you really should have at least two to three staff members, because you're going to have one at the counter, you're going to have one getting ready to games and get games in and get games out, and you should have one in the arena, uh, you know, checking on uh, the customers, making sure they're safe, they're not damaging the equipment. So on a busy Saturday, it's not unusual to have three staff members or more depending on volume. So you talk about numbers. What about uh, are are they dedicated to the laser tag, or are they are they cross trained? What are we doing with those? Well, every everybody today, especially in today's economy, you want to cross train all your employees. Um, but laser tag is a, kind of a bit of a specialty item, and that's not to be a distraction. It's just that because of the technology involved in laser tag, because of the environment involved in laser tag, because of the guest experience involved in laser tag, we have a lot of touch points with the customers. So you really should have your A game crew running laser tag, um, the kids that are very extroverted, the very personable, the very uh, driven, and who enjoy laser tag should be the ones running laser tag. So you would hire somebody who likes to play laser tag? Very, very much. I mean, you, you hire a player uh, simply because they have an enjoyment for the game that's vital to the, to the game experience. You want that joy and that passion to come across to your guests. Um, you know, and, and so if trying to find people that play, and I've used it as a, as a hiring tool when I go to hire uh, people, even during the job interview, I'll let someone go play laser tag, and then I see if they are team players or if they're uh, all about getting their own points. So if they're team players, they'd be great for my team. And if they're just solo and all about themselves, I really don't want to hire them. 
Oh, interesting how you, uh, the, the staffing uh, crossover and the idea of having the, uh, the A team was kind of surprising to me. I, I always thought of a marshal just kind of stands there inside, the, inside the, uh, the laser tag arena. That's not what you want them to do? Not, not really. That's, <laughs> uh, that's kind of your bare minimum you know, uh, expectation. But when you look at uh, amazing facilities, they usually have two or three really dynamic, energetic individuals who believe in the game experience and believe in the happiness that it, it derives from. Uh, this isn't a, you're not looking for a cashier at a, a, con, a, at a convenience store. You're looking for someone that's uh, dynamic, outgoing, energetic, and understands that we sell smiles. And, we, they, and they believe in that product and they believe in that experience for the customer and they want that customer to have a great experience. So the Marshall is part of your sales team, if you will. So they're helping increase your sales. What are some of the other things that, uh, that a, an operator can do to help generate revenue and sales within their within their laser tag. So I, I've visited lots and lots. I'm mean, hundreds of bowling centers, if not uh, you know over a thousand over the years uh, that just have laser tag. And in fact, last week I, I you know I, I travel quite a bit and I visited probably five bowling centers in just three days. Um, so you know we'd love to see more marketing on the on the mass uh, you know over the lanes. Love to see more table tent marketing. Um, you know right next to the, the the beer marketing. Let's put some laser tag marketing um, posters or flyers in the bathrooms. Poster or flyers uh, you know throughout the facility, even, even being able to give away games of laser tag in the redemption counter is something very simple, low cost, and you know, people will respond. Why not take the, the tickets or the point values they earn in the redemption and redeem it for a free game of laser tag? And so there's a lot of in-house marketing one can do to actually really promote the idea of laser tag is there at the facility. So what about uh, digital marketing? Is there anything you can should do specifically? Are you marketing the bowling center? Are you marketing laser tag? It's kind of a separate entity. Well, you know, the, the best answer is both, right? So I visit a lot of bowling center websites. They have laser tag, and then there's no pictures of laser tag players on there. But it's just says laser tag, seven bucks. And you really, you want to have pictures of players. Today's uh, uh, crowd is very much oriented towards visual stimulation. So they're going to look at the Instagram. They're going to look at the Facebook. They're going to look at the Snapchat. They're going to look at the TikTok. And so that's all visually driven. And laser tag is incredibly visually driven. We have blinky packs and a laser gun from the future. And so that portrays quite well in print marketing or, well, let's not call it print, but digital marketing. So operators should be doing that on their websites and in their brand imaging. So what kind of uh, social media could they use? What, what would they use? In their well, so Facebook is great for marketing birthday parties, uh, you know, to the moms, because that's where the moms are at. But if you're really, you know, and, and it's not even, it, but you do that and you also throw up Instagram imagery. Uh, laser tag looks really good on Instagram. Uh, today's kids are all about Snapchat. Uh, and you can do promos with Snapchat. You can literally say the high score of the game, if you send out this message, you know, post it on your Snapchat, we'll give you a free game pass or we'll give you $5 in arcade credit. So there's a lot that a, a person can do because on Snapchat, that's a very personal thing because you're reaching their friends. Um, you know, an average Snapchat user may have somewhere between 700 to 1,000 friends on their contacts and you can't reach them but, they, but the, the customer can reach them by encouraging them taking pictures or videos of them wearing the equipment or playing in the laser tag arena. Um, and then TikTok's the same story. Kids are always on TikTok now. And man, or the uh, bowling operator should be making uh, laser tag and bowling related TikToks and putting it out there for the kids to entertain themselves with. So we talked a lot up here about marketing, getting, getting help growing the sales. There's a lot of similarity to um, the the laser tag and lanes, right? We have only number of a certain number of vests that we can sell in a certain number of period of time, right? So many missions per hour, things of that nature. W what happens when we have a, a vest or two or three that are down uh, that aren't available to be used at a given time slot? We have lost revenue, right? Absolutely. So, so what are some of the, the, the critical maintenance steps like you would do for a bowling lane to make sure that those, those vests don't go down? So that is why laser tag and bowling, I think, have gone so well hand in hand over nearly a 30 year period. We have in laser tag, we have common mechanical issues, which are going to be uh, uh, triggers. It's going to be laser modules. It's going to be phaser cords. And an operator really should invest in having extra components of those, regardless of the, ma the manufacturer's warranty, regardless of what the manufacturer may say, having additional uh, uh, spare parts, uh, because everything in laser 
laser tag is relatively modular. So even a 16 year old can pop off a laser tag phaser shell, pop on a trigger, pop in a laser module, and then put that phaser back into play. And you're not out that phaser or that pack for the weekend. Um, and so that is a, a, a vital part. Down the line, if they really have that much capacity, uh, it's wise for them to reach out to a manufacturer, whoever gear they have, and buy one or two additional packs. It's amazing. Uh, on average, a laser tag pack will generate $12,000 to $15,000 a year, yet cost only approximately $2,000, depending on the manufacturer. Substantial return on, on investment on just a single or double packs. So even though prices are increasing, there's still a huge ROI in the maintenance. The key is to make sure you've got them on hand so you can make the, the repairs and not have a, a vast down. You don't want to lose that revenue. Not, not at all. In today's day, uh, especially because we are now seeing even bowling operators are raising the price of laser tag experiences uh, to offset the increased labor costs that they're now suffering throughout the, you know, th throughout the United States. So absolutely, having product available uh, because we have a, we're a demand load uh, uh, industry and we're really our demand is, is uh, Friday at 6 p.m. to Sunday at 6 p.m. So that demand load is vital that we're able to handle that group. Uh, everyone is slow on a Tuesday. <laughs> True. Bowling lanes are pretty dark in the afternoon on Tuesday also for most part, right? So there is a comparison. I see that. Now, uh, we could talk forever. After 10 years of hearing your presentations, uh, I, I know there's so much more we can go into. But just kind of one final question, because we went from years ago where we had a scenario where it's just a fad. We're, we're long past that now, but where do you see laser tag going in the future with this relationship in the past? Well, so the exciting part about laser tag is we are benefiting from technologies that are both in the battery field development, and there's a lot of research and money being put into batteries. Um, and so batteries are lasting longer in laser tag, which means packs can run longer during the course of a day. Uh, the polycarbonates are getting stronger. Um, so just on a material side, we're seeing greater durability uh, of, of the laser tag product, which means greater uh, profits for the operator. Um, on a, a future technology, we're, you know, I'm still very much um, sold on the idea of augmented reality. I don't see headset laser tag ever truly existing, um, but I do see the ability to look at a laser uh, screen and see a mine or an energy pack or some sort of you know, uh, in-game um, experience translated into the laser tag arena. And so that, I believe, is still coming. We're seeing better cameras being put on laser tag guns. We're seeing better screens on the laser tag phasers. So it's not much longer before we one day get into a minimal uh, arena design and more virtual uh, uh, floating features. Uh, but still, at the end of the day, the base level of laser tag is people like zapping other people. <laughs> And that hasn't changed in 30 years. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, thank you for taking just a few minutes out of your, your busy schedule. You, the laundry list of all the things you're doing every day is, is just amazing that you are willing to take some time with us. So, so thank you, Eric, for, for spending some time with us this morning, sharing a small piece of your knowledge of the laser tag industry. If you would like to connect with Eric uh, or more about laser tag in general, whether it's to improve your laser tag or, or to add it as an attraction to your facility, visit lasertag.com or or email Eric directly at eric at lasertag.com. As we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember, when your focus is on growing your people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next week at 1015 Eastern for another great episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. If you have any questions about today's show or would like additional information, you can reach us at any time at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm Kelly Bednar. Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. See you next week.